uh, takes care of it. And when I, when it doesn't work, I write to them and tell them, look, it hasn't worked. Oh, well. Um, hi, guys. Okay, so we're going to do Hawking and Unruh. Both of these are fascinating topics. Hawking radiation, of course, is black holes. Unruh radiation is accelerating coordinate systems. And the pathway, I want to do these things. I want to do Hawking at least twice. Um, one quick way and one not. But the quick way has a big setup because the, the, when I do Unruh, which is number two, I'm going to use this technique of Bogolyubov transformations. Which is the standard. And I apologize in advance, I have trouble saying Bogolyubov many times in a row. <laughs> so uh, Bogolyubov transformations, I'll do unru that way. That's the standard way. Um, then when I get to Hawking, I'm going to do it quick. Um, by analogy. Because once you, once you see the connection between the Hawking and Unruh, you can just sort of read off the answer. And then the fourth thing I'd like to do is I'd like to go back and do a more of a quantum field theory treatment. Um, that actually allows us to answer, well, we don't do the answering, but the, this type of treatment allows us to answer whether it's sensitive to high energy physics or not. And so that's nice to see that. Um, so that's the pathway. And the, so today I'm going to start off with this thing, the Bogolyubov transformations in general, and do essentially two types of Bogolyubov transformations, one very simple one and the one a little bit more complicated, but you'll have the idea by then. And the basic idea here is that something that's a vacuum state for one observer is not a vacuum state for another, always. equals particles in another case. You know, their frame or their situation, something, you change something. And this is a technique, in effect, for the condensed matter folks here. Um, I always love teaching this technique when I do statistical mechanics. When, uh, I don't know if you've seen it in, you've not seen it in there. Oh, if I can find my statistical mechanics case. It, it's good for both, both condensation, so it's a great, one for both kinds of This isn't, none of this actually, n not even Hawking is really quantum gravity in the sense it's, it's field theory, quantum field theory in curved space time. Gravity is treated classically as far as this is concerned, but it's pretty clear that gravitons would also radiate. And so you would have them radiating also, but at the moment that's, it's really just other fields in a curved background. Okay, so here's our here's our little project, sample project for doing Bogolyubov wave transmissions. Let's let's I'm going to look at the Higgs, or, or really just a scalar particle, but I make it pretty by calling it a Higgs, and symmetry breaking. And I imagine the following. So here's here's the potential for a scalar particle with symmetry breaking. So this is V of phi versus phi. And at the center here, the particle is essentially massless. And let me just make this a little bit flat at the center just to make it massless at the center. Uh, when it sits down here, at the minimum, it has a mass, there's a curvature to this, so it's, it's massive. Um, 
and perhaps you might want to just think of this as, as a function of temperature, you know, as function of temperature, high temperature, it looks like this, T high, T low, zero, T is equal to zero, looks like this. And then in between, it goes through a, a phase transition where the field starts off at the center and rolls down to, the, to some non-zero value of phi. Okay, so my sample approximation is I'm going to take that the, we start out with phi is equal to zero for t less than zero. And then we make a transition to phi, phi is equal to non-zero, phi is equal to v when t is equal to zero. And the approximation is, it's instantaneous. Okay, um, so here it's a massless, and here the mass is 2 mu squared. The mass squared is 2 mu squared. We'll just call it m. Okay, but the main point is that it, it goes from being massless to massive all of a sudden. Okay, and, and playing with this, we're looking at the vacuum states, and so the initial vacuum state. is defined by these creation and annihilation operators. Okay, so we, uh, all, the game is creation and annihilation operators. So we have phi, phi of x is integral d3 k over two pi cubed, one over square root of two omega k, a of k, e to the minus i k dot x, plus a dagger of k e to the plus i k dot x. Okay, and in this case here, omega k at the initial state, omega k is just the magnitude of k. And we have a of k a dagger of k equals um, 2 pi cubed delta 3 k minus k prime. And I, one of those should have been k prime. So a with a dagger, 1 of k, 1 of k prime, it gives me a delta function. And we build up the states by the following. We build up the states by starting out with the vacuum state, which is defined by A of K on the vacuum state gives me zero. Okay, so this this guy's gonna be big for us. That's the definition of the the condition on the vacuum the empty space. And then given the commutation rules, if we have a Hamiltonian and a number operator, which is integral d3 k 2 pi cubed, this guy's h bar omega, a dagger of k, a of k, and this is just a dagger Then, then this satisfies H on some state K prime equals H bar omega prime, K prime. So it gives the energy state and it gives the number. So, et cetera. So you can build up all your states that way. Okay, so that's the, the background. What we we're gonna do is We'll have a similar expression afterwards, and the vacuum afterwards is going to not be the same as the vacuum beforehand, and that's going to be where our particles are produced. Okay, so for Cody, um, I'm just
I'm doing an, uh, an approximate calculation for Bose's transmission, where we instantaneously change from um, basically a massive state to a massive state. Okay, and I dressed it up it like it was the Higgs rolling down its potential, but anyway, and clearly, if it really was the Higgs, it started out there and some stage rolled down. There'd be some intermediate phase before it settled down. Uh, so this instantaneous approximation it wouldn't be really true, but, but you can actually correct for that a little bit. Okay, so here we have to project out A and A dagger. Okay, and so let let's do the following. Let's let U be the wave function. U of k of x is e to the minus i k dot x over the square root of 2 omega k. Okay. And then calculate the following. Okay, let's calculate integral d3 x u star k of x and I want I D zero left and right phi of X. Okay. This construction will give me the creation operator. Um, just to remind you, D zero left and right is D that way minus D the, the, other, the other way. Okay. So, if we do this, we get um, so this equals integral d3x e to the plus i k dot x over square root of 2 omega um, k. Then there's an integral d3k prime. 1 over square root of 2 omega k prime. Um, then I have this i d0 left and right, and e to the minus i k prime dot x, a of k prime, plus e to the plus i k prime dot x, a dagger of k prime. Okay, so let's see how much we can do in our heads. This this guy, ID zero left and right, gives me, for this term, it gives me omega prime plus omega. So here's omega over here, omega k. So okay. when, I, when I act on the first term, on the second term, I, ID zero gives me um, minus omega prime plus omega k. Okay, so the, this guy turns into those factors there. Then the integral d4x gives me, uh, d3x gives me a delta function of k and k prime for the first term. So this one gives me a delta 3 of k minus k prime. In the second term, it actually gives me a delta 3 of k plus k prime. So at, at the end of this, the I get, um, I get the 1 over 2 omega k, 2 omega k prime, but those are going to be the same. I guess the first term is omega plus omega prime. Those are going to be the same also. Um, A of k, and then the second one is going to be Oh, and I also have a time dependence 
let's put the time event in. It makes a point. E to the I, the time has not been integrated over, so it's E to the I, omega T minus omega prime T at the same time. Um, and then the, the second piece is minus omega prime plus omega, which is, is clearly going to vanish, E to the plus I omega plus omega prime T and A dagger of minus K. The value with K is equal to K prime. And so this guy gives zero. The time dependence drops out. The two omegas drop out. And this is just this A of K. This is this is somewhat standard, and so I've projected out a and likewise to get a dagger. I would just do a dagger of k is integral d three x u of k x um, minus minus i d zero left and right phi of x. And so I just I, I not starred here. The first, this one was starred. The first one was starred. The second one is not. Okay. Um, these came out to be time independent. I'd like to just do a proof that they're on on why they're time independent. Okay because this actually holds in general relativity also, this holds more generally. If I look at the time derivative on A of K, okay, so forget how I've already shown that it's independent of time, but let's just go into the definition here. D3, um, X, <coughs> I take a time derivative on u star of k i d zero left and right phi. Okay. Here there's the in principle there's four terms. The cross terms cancel, and this is then integral d three x u star k d zero squared this way phi minus d zero squared that way so those are both squared okay but then this satisfies the klein gordon equation so in general this is then integral d three x e star of k, um, del squared plus m squared, where that's acting that way, minus del squared plus m squared acting that way. They satisfy the Klein-Gordon equation. Um, for the, the m's disappear immediately, the other guys you integrate by parts, And this equals zero if the Klein-Gordon equation is satisfied. Okay. Okay, that's useful because that's actually part of the steps that I'm going to do when I do Hawking the other way, the, the non bogle of transformation way. In, in Curve space, it actually gener generalizes the A of K is written over any three surface, the sigma mu. So this was, this mu carries a, uh, a normal, which was in the time direction before. So it was D3X, this 
Um, but this could be any surface, u star, any wave function of x, i d mu left and right, phi of x. And this, this is covariantly conserved so that it's, it's in the, the surface that you choose. if the Klein-Gordon equation is satisfied in curve space. Okay, so there's our, there's our um, creation annihilation operation. And, and for Boston's sake, let me just say, what I'm doing is I'm doing a, a toy project, which is the, um, an instantaneous transition from the top of the Higgs potential to the bottom where the mass changes by this amount, okay? And I'm doing Bogliubov transformations this way, and I'm gonna do Unruh with Bogliubov, then Hawking that way, and then QFT is Hawking. Okay, that's the, that's the game plan. Okay, so at this stage I have the, the initial state. Now let's look at the final states. And afterwards, the, the final vacuum, let's just call it the out, is the, constructed the same way. It's just the vacuum of a, a massive particle instead. And we're, we get a whole set of new creation annihilation operators. So you have phi is integral d 3k to pi cubed one over two omega, let's write it as m k square rooted. This guy is going to be square root of k squared plus m squared. And now let's call these b of k e to the minus i k dot x plus b dagger of K e to the i k dot x. Okay, and you know I'm using notation where I'm hiding some stuff here. This this k dot x is omega m k t minus k vector dot x. K vector is being integrated over. But the, the time component of there is the one that's appropriate for the mass of particles. Okay. So to, here's the Bogrio of transformation. Let's rela relate these creation and annihilation operators. Okay. The B of K satisfies the same form of a construction. So we have integral d3 x uh, <coughs> times the e to the i k dot x over the square root of 2 omega m k. Then I've got i d0 left and right. And then what sits here is phi, but I'm going to instead use the initial con construction of phi. So phi is the same field, but just now with a changed mass. So I'm gonna use this as the integral d3 k prime over two pi cubed one over square root of two, let's call it zero, omega zero k, just to emphasize that, it, that it's the massless one. And then A of k prime e to the minus i k prime dot x, A dagger of k prime e to the plus i k prime dot x, and I guess I have one extra bracket there, okay. 
Okay, so again, we've sort of been through this now. The the D zeros brings down the omegas. It's going to be either this one has omega m in it, and this guy has omega zero k in it. Um, the the D three X is going to enforce K is equal to either plus K prime or minus K prime. And so let's just go write out what the answer is. The answer is it's one over the square root of two Omega M K two Omega zero K. It's Omega zero K plus Omega M K e to the i of omega mk minus e omega 0 k t. It's a of k plus then this one is omega mk minus omega 0 k e to the i, it's the sum of the two, t and a dagger of minus k. Okay, everyone see that part? That's, that's the interesting part of the calculation. Um, this is then defined as alpha of k, a of k, plus beta of k, a dagger of minus k. Session now, the, 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 the D of k depends, uh, depends explicitly on time. Right? Yes. So, yeah, the, the trick here is that this hasn't satisfied the Klein Gordon equation at all times. Okay. But it just gives a phase. And so it actually cancels out when we, when we take the, the number. The number operator. The number operator is going to cancel out because it's just a phase. But there's no problem a priori to say that these are time dependent, right? There's there's no problem to say that they're time dependent a priori. That's right. Um, in this case, they they have come out to be time dependent. Okay, and it's because it didn't satisfy the Klein-Gordon equation the whole way. Okay, they're time independent when it does. Okay, so actually, in the gravity case where the Klein-Gordon equation is satisfied, it's time independent. But it's it's also a slightly different bulk of transmission than I'm doing right here. So let's, I'll do that one in a second. All right. So we get alpha and beta is this one over the square root of two omega zero k omega m two m k. Um, it's omega zero k plus or minus omega m k. And then there's the the phase upstairs, e to the i. Okay. Um, one thing that you can note, I just want to, before we go on, let's do, this actually is relevant. So it's alpha squared minus beta squared if you do that, it has one over two omega zero, two omega m k, and then when you square that, the 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 phase drops out. Omega squared, you get only keep the cross term. You get the four omega m k. Um, omega zero k, that equals one. Okay, and that's that's actually, you can get that condition two ways. You can get that from inverting. So if you take 
B of K and you, you do the reverse transformation, it's alpha star of K. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, that's not right uh, from, so here's, it's A of K is alpha star of K, B of K plus beta star of K B dagger of minus K. But if you put the, these guys in, that's then alpha star of K, um, you know, alpha A from the original one plus beta B dagger, I mean, A dagger plus reverse one. This turns into alpha squared minus beta squared that was a minus sign times a. Okay, so to to have a consistent inversion, you have to have that condition. And the other thing that you have to have it for is it also preserves the b dagger b equals yeah the two pi cube delta three of k minus k prime. B dagger, I'm sorry, B B dagger, K, K prime. I was one step ahead of myself because we need to preserve also B of K, B of K prime equals zero. Okay, so if you impose that condition, it works. Okay, good. Okay. <clears throat> So now, here comes the fun part. Here's the particle number calculation. So we started with the incoming vacuum state was that appropriate to m equals to zero. The outgoing vacuum state is that m not equal to zero. And so if you look then, what's the number of outgoing particles seen in the incoming state? So zero in B dagger of K, B of K. It's not just, okay, uh, zero in. Okay, so we've got the incoming state but we're counting the number of particles that you see, okay? Well, that's, that's easy to calculate here. This is zero um, alpha star a dagger, I'm suppressing this is beta star a, that's the b dagger. The, it's alpha a plus beta a dagger, zero in. Okay, A acting on the incoming vacuum gives zero, so that guy disappears. This guy disappears. This is beta squared. Times two pi cube delta of zero. Remember the, the BB dagger is delta of K minus K prime. So if this was, this is A of K prime, A of K, it would be a delta function there. But I get rid of this guy by um, delta three of zero is the integral d3 x e to the minus i k dot x, um, I'm sorry, k minus k prime, but evaluated with k equals k prime, 
this just guy turns into the volume. And, and so the number per unit volume turns into the integral d3k times beta of k squared. Okay. In our particular case here, it's, it's the integral d3k um, omega mk minus omega zero k squared over four omega zero k omega mk. But there's that's that's the general expression for this force. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because the the state we started with is before the transition, we know what the state was. It was the incoming state, the in vacuum. And then after the transition, we're looking at it now with, with new eyes of the outgoing particles, eyes. And we say that state that we had there didn't have any time to change. So it's still the, 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 that state. It now looks like it has particles in it. OK? You see the logic? Good. Does any, anyone have questions about that? So that's that's the the simplest case of particle protection that I know. Um, I actually want to. Yeah. So I mean, if if you did the outstate, if you had the outstate, and use the a operators, you'd also have particle numbers. But if you use the b operators, you don't have it. Okay. So. Okay, so I don't know if that answers you because, okay. okay. Um, um, but the guy is just a very simple question. The guy, in this, so the, in, the, in, the, in this formulation, what, what if I calculated the transition? Basically, the transition between the in vacuum and the out vacuum. Yeah, okay. I can, can, I, can I do that? Yes, in fact, in fact I, I can actually, I can sort of do that for you right now. Okay. I, I'm going to. What I want to do is I want to show you what the vacuum, what the what the state looks like in in terms of b particles, and the answer to that actually is at the end we can answer that because I'll I'll know my state in terms of b particles. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. You, right. Yes, and you still have particle reduction. Yes, that's. A, that's a more difficult calculation because I have to I have to make that transition as the way through. Okay, the this this focus of transformation in that case is going to look like what the one I'm going to do after two more pages of notes. Okay, uh, there's a different form. It has it has some mode mixing. Okay, um, and uh, I just it's it's longer than this, so I. That's that's why I did. Yeah. Anyway, the, what I'd like to uh, the thing I want to do it's it's not actually required for what we're going to do in the gravity case, but it's sort of nice to to know this anyhow. And that's the state that you get here is a coherent state, and we can actually just solve for it. And and so it's. Let's just try that. The 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 state we started with is this zero in, but we're going to look look at it in terms of 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 final state particles. Um, so it'll be looked at in terms of b dagger b dagger on the out vacuum okay because it's going to have particles in it and they'll they'll be paired up actually okay um so in, in other words the zero in equals sum over some states of non-vacuum states here out and that's and that's what that's what gives us the this number operator
Okay, so that's that's what we want to do. But actually, the condition for doing it actually isn't um, that. The condition to, that it lets us do the solution is I'm going to use the original definition A of K on zero in equals zero. So the vacuum state is annihilated by all the A of Ks. But since we know the inverse transformation there, this is then going to be um, alpha star B of um, B of K minus beta star B dagger of minus K That's going to have to equal zero now. And so we're going to make up a little ansatz. <laughs> Excuse me, the sneezes are contagious, Will. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Um, the ansatz for zero in, and then make this solve for this. Okay. So the ansatz is going to be the following is we're going to consider um, a product over the momentum. Okay, I'm going to have to change notations just briefly. Um, and then a sum over n particles, or two n particles, C. So let me label this, these things I here for just a few minutes. I'll come back and say that of n. And it's me B dagger i b dagger minus i to the nth zero out. Okay, so the onset is, is basically that we have these things paired. There's for every particle with some positive momentum. So i is like the momentum. There's one with negative momentum. So it's like the k and k minus k. There's pairs of particles. What I did do, I, which I should have said ahead of time, is I want to go to discrete notation because it makes this thing easier. So um, the, these guys are going to be labeled, so the K goes to discrete label I. You know, so you might imagine putting it in a box, and this is the easiest thing. You put it in a box and use box normalization, and then you have discrete energy levels. Um, and then so the B of I is alpha I A I minus beta I A dagger is minus I, I because it's the other direction, and then the number operator that we calculated before is the sum over i beta i squared. Okay. 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 This the the place where this is important here is this product over i. If, if I had continuum momentum there, it's hard to know how to take that pro that product over all the different momentum. I don't know how to, even how to write it. So this is just a, this is a of, uh, right. That's right. So, so at at each momentum, there's a sum that is it's no no particles plus two particles plus four particles plus eight particles and the coefficients of these c's. Yeah. Well, we'll actually see it's a particular coherent state. Um, in a particular state is going to exponentiate. See, at this stage could be anything, though I'm going to solve for it right now. Okay. And the condition solving for it is this one up here. Um, the that B and um, that A acting on the vacuum gives zero on the state. 
So let's just go and do this to, so to calculate it. Okay, so let's take AI on this in state, okay? Um, so there's gonna be this product of, of momentum, so it's product over J, and there's all these guys here, the, the, the J is not equal to I, but then I, the only case that's interesting is when I and J are the same. So I'm gonna have a sum over N here. I'm going to have, that's probably worth, I have alpha star B I minus beta star B dagger minus I. I've got acting on C, C N. C I N B I B dagger B dagger I B dagger minus I. Okay, and then zero out. Okay, so let's just look at, and this was to the nth power. The pro okay, the, the, these are all the, the ones when, when J is not equal to I. Okay, so I'm, I've, got, I've got an infinite number in this product, and, but, but the, the I acts only on the ones that have it, I's in it, okay? All right, so let's forget that, that stuff in the front. This is the part that had better equal zero, because that's the only active stuff. All the other stuff is just transparent. Okay, um, this here in the sum here, I'm going to look, this first one here gets rid of one of the, the Bs, and the next one creates, adds one. So the, the terms in the sum that have to cancel come from, from two different CNs. So one of them is CIN. So this is the one now, N, and I'm going to take one away. So it's going to have an alpha star. And there's a factor of N, because there's N of those that it can annihilate. And then sitting out here will be B dagger I to the N minus 1, and B minus I to the N. Okay. The other one that has that same one is the one that started out with n minus one for both of them, but then gets an added one. So this is the minus beta star times c n minus one. So it started with n minus one, gets a boost up, and there's no factor of n there. Okay, and so we have some over n's here too. All right, so this guy then, this this tells us that C I N C I N is one over N C I N minus one beta star I over alpha star I. That's that's the condition. This is a recursion relation. This then tells us that C i of n is one over n factorial times um, uh, times beta star over alpha star to the n one. Uh, I already have that. So times c zero. Okay, so it's looking like it exponentiates. 
Um, the yeah. okay, so it's 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 going to turn into an exponential, and all we have to do is calculate c zero. Um, to get c zero. You take um, the normalization, so zero in, zero in equals one. This, there's, there's just basically, um, so it's, yeah, let's just, I, I can write it out. It's the sum over n um, alpha. No, beta over alpha um, to the squared to the, the two n. Actually, it's 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 that thing's absolute squared since one's conjugated. Um, there's one over n factorial squared times c zero squared times n factorial squared. N factorial squared comes from the n factorial ways of combining up the B's, I's, and the B I daggers. This turns into this. This then implies C zero squared is. It's a. This is a geometric series. Becomes one over one minus beta squared over alpha squared. Beta over alpha squared, which is an alpha squared over alpha squared minus beta squared and so that's just alpha squared okay I, that part is not that useful but this has told us what our our coherent state is this is a zero in the vacuum in is it's alpha it's a product over i's alpha um, the exponential of beta star over alpha star i b dagger i b dagger minus i okay and then your uh, bottom's question was on the normalization if i take out in I get the product over I of alpha I's. Okay. No, that's something else. Yeah. No. What you call Coleman calculation? Yeah, the so nucleation. Well, nucleation is. I mean, it's not that dissimilar, but that's taken over a place over a finite volume, and and basically, so what happens in there is is that you actually, when you do make this bubble transition, you know, in, the, in a way that you could calculate, you would get some particles. And so the question was, um, was if you had a, a bubble nucleation where you take one vacuum and you instantaneously pop to another vacuum. The the initial vacuum is then going to look like particles to the to the guys inside there. And so if you produce this bubble you're going to get some particles in that out, uh, outgoing vacuum. It's not going to be completely empty. Which is the same idea. Which I guess well it's it's it's, it's similar, yes. I have a transition basically there should be I mean I would expect that there should be an exponential factor there. Right? John well, well this is this is funny because it's just been an instantaneous transition. Okay. Okay. So it's just the product of those alphas. John. Yes. Uh, so when you when you take the um, the normalization condition. Yes. 
inside the sum, is that beta over alpha to the 2n power? Yeah, it should be 2n. Thank you. Okay, and secondly, then, that doesn't mean that c squared is equal to 1 over that. It's the reciprocal of that, right? Because you get the um, series on the right hand oh, side. Do I have that upside down? Yeah, you have it upside down. It sure looks that way, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Thank you. That looks looks right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so <laughs> something like that. Yeah. The, the thing I like about this is 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 that description of, of how the particles live there. There's actually a little something funny there. Something's funny. But I'm not going to solve it here in, in, while worrying about it. Okay. Um, so that's the bulk of transmission in general. There's actually a more general one. Actually, anyone want to ask a question about that before I move on? Okay. This one is the one that you actually see in Hawking and Unruh effects. And it includes so it's the following. It's going to be B labeled by some frequency omega. It's going to be related to the original one with some frequency little omega as an integral. So it comes out looking like alpha of omega, capital omega plus beta of omega, omega, a dagger of omega. Okay. Um, in principle, this thing goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, but of course, these things don't have to exist for all of those. In practice, in practice for Hawking and Unruh, the ohm, both little omega and capital omega are positive, so this only runs from zero up. But that just means that they, they vanish when, when they're not there. So it's, the formula is the same. The condition we have to impose, you know, so we want, we have A of K or A of omega a dagger of omega is going to be this delta of omega minus omega prime. And we're going to want the, and one's primed. And we're going to want the b's to satisfy the same one. So that's a condition. And we will want the b's. Bs to commute with each other. Okay, and this then gives me a couple conditions. This implies that the integral d omega of alpha of omega. capital omega alpha star of omega capital omega prime minus beta of capital omega omega prime is delta of omega minus omega prime. So we have this mode mixing here. And the other condition is the omega alpha beta minus alpha beta. It's omega capital omega omega capital omega prime. And then reverse omegas and omega primes.
equals zero. All right. Um, in this case, there's an in inverse also. I, maybe I should just write it. I, I forget if I need to use it later on. Alpha of omega is the integral of the capital omega of alpha star b minus beta star b dagger um, okay so that's that uh, guy and now particle number particle number is the following the number with in the B states, zero. The A states, B dagger of omega, B omega, zero A is now going to be the integral D omega of beta of omega omega. So we have this integral over this extra index running here. And you should, this is actually going to diverge. You can sort of see it here. If I put these two indices together, you can expect that that's going to be a delta function of zero. Um, So, but you can get rid of that by doing, um, by dividing through by the normalization condition. So this, you can rewrite this as the integral d omega of beta of omega, omega, and then divide through by the normalization condition. Um, actually, and this is, I'm sorry, this, this is actually the number per unit volume. Sorry. So, sorry. I, I skipped a couple steps going to that. And, okay, so that's, that's our, our, the one that's going to fall out later on. So when we get there, here's what happens. in both Unruh and Hawking is, is basically there's an exponential relation that beta of omega omega squared is e to the minus some constant times omega times alpha of omega omega squared that's exponential Now let's call it beta. Let's call it, now that's now beta is not too good either, but it is the temp inverse temperature. All right, let's call it one over t. Okay. So alphas and betas are going to have this exponential relationship, and then the number density is then, if, if you just go through, is integral d omega e to the minus omega over t alpha over of omega, omega squared in the numerator. In the denominator, it's the integral d omega um, alpha of omega, omega squared one minus e to the minus 
omega over theta, alpha squared minus beta squared. And this then turns into one over e to the omega over t minus one. It gives us a thermal distribution. So finding the, an exponential relationship between beta and omega gives us thermal, and that's, that's then the goal. All right. I have time to start to do a little bit of, of starting on questions about that. If not, let's start on your. Okay, the UNRU is going to be an accelerated observer in Minkowski. So there's a good deal of work that goes into describing an accelerated observer. That's the work. Um, but the easy part here is that the, the vacuum state, what we had in, is just the Minkowski vacuum. And we just have to figure out what, what this guy sees. And what to watch for is in our coordinates, the coordinates are going to have an exponential relation also. So there's going to be some coordinates. I'll tell you what these are. There's be some minus constant times a times some other coordinates. The coordinates get an exponential relationship. Of coordinates and all the action is in that. Okay, and the part that I probably get a chance to say now is, is the these coordinates. I I used what they are. I'm going to use light cone coordinates. So I have to very quickly do light cone coordinates, and then we'll be set to go. Okay, um, so we're going to use these. So let's imagine that we're going to be boosting in the x direction. So let's take u is t minus x, uh, v is t plus x. And 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 so that if I have a plane wave state that looks like e to the i omega t minus x, that's e to the i omega u. And so u describes right moving right moving states and e to the I minus i omega t plus x is left moving states. So you, you separate it left and right. When we do Hawking, it's going to be incoming and outgoing, radially incoming and outgoing. OK, um, if I have d s squared is dt squared minus dx squared, this is so I've, I'm now inverting this. It's one quarter du plus dv uh, squared minus one quarter dv minus du squared minus dy squared minus dz squared in general. Um, this is then just du dv minus dy squared minus dz squared. And so in these coordinates, in light cone coordinates, a to mu nu is 0, 1 half, 1 half, 0, minus 1, minus 1. Funny coordinates, huh? Um, the the wave equation is 
in flat space is a de mu nu d mu d nu on phi equals zero that becomes then du dv minus del squared transverse phi equals zero so that's funny and then i'm going to do a lot of stuff in 2d So it basically takes this del transverse, you, you drop drop all the transverse stuff. And then in 2D, just the wave equation is du dv phi is equal to zero. And the solutions are then phi is equal to a of u plus b of v. So I separate out left and right movers. Okay, so that's just typical particles moving left and right in, in 2D. Okay, and it's these guys, actually it's these light cone guys that end up being related by, by that exponential factor. The transverse ones don't get related that way. All right, so I've used up 16, 17 pages worth of notes, all handwritten, so I've been racing too fast. Um, but that's where we are. So we'll come back, we'll then do description of acceleration in Minkowski, relativistic acceleration, and do unrelated. Okay, so that's next. Thanks.